Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and in this video we're gonna answer a question Does topology really matter in 3D modeling? Let's go! Well, it's a difficult question guys and the answer is yes it does, but it depends Now if you're interested in learning a bit more about topology in depth and having some really cool videos with examples We actually went ahead and updated our topology guide, Blender Bros topology guide and created topology guide 2.0 You can get it for free on our website and the link is in the video description. Enjoy! Now you need to understand one thing that the myth that you need to use quads in every single model that you do because that's the proper topology it's bullshit so if someone tells you that just slap them to wake them up they haven't jumped on the bus that just you know came from the 1960s uh, we have 2022 now the things are very different we have very different hardware very different solutions to 3d for example in blender we have weighted normal modifier which sorts out a lot of problem shading especially on hard surface so you know things are a bit different so using quad topology for every single goddamn thing you model is just retarded don't do it because it's a waste of time now, do you still need quad topology in 3D modeling? Hell yes, you do, but it depends when. So the answer to the question, does topology matter, should be topology needs to have a purpose. So, in other words, you need to model something in a way that will fit the purpose of your model. If you model something, let's say hard surface, like this, right? And you're going to put it on your portfolio, or even you're going to use it as a game asset. Guys, you do not need quads because there's nothing in this model that's going to deform. This is a hard surface model with flat surfaces and there is no reason whatsoever for me to have quads on this area or on this area, I just don't need it. All I need, if it was a game asset, to have, you know, a mid poly bevel, which is basically a um, two, um, two edged or one segmented bevel and weighted normal modifier. And I can very easily triangulate this model before exporting to Substance Painter. Uh, to texture it and you will have no problem whatsoever with shading and we have two courses on this you know that prove the point two game asset courses i mean now when you're going to be deforming something on the other hand okay or when you're gonna be sending it to a down a specific pipeline so when even topology or a pro proper and specific flow of topology is required that's a very different story guys for example if i was uh to let's say a model something like this, I would most likely be using sub D because you know it's um, uh, much easier to create this kind of a shape. So if I'm gonna be creating a model like that, I'm gonna be using sub D both for the surface and the details. I need to maintain the correct sh shading on my curvature, but also I need to create a specific edge flow or face flow around you know um, my details to be able to maintain proper shading on these details, right? Another thing is that if I'm going to be running trim sheets on this kind of a, a model, you know, I want to have a quad topology because it's simply easier to do that. So if I'm going to add a trim sheet here, for example, you see I can very easily do that because I have a quad, um, you know, quad strip around uh, this element here. So quad topology can be extremely useful uh, when you need it for specific reasons. Another reason to use quad topology would be when you bend something or deform something. Let's just grab a cube, for example, and move it somewhere here. And I'm going to scale it down and maybe extend it here on this axis. Let's apply the scale and let's add some mud to it, okay? So now let's say I'm going to grab this cube and I'm going to create um, this many um, loops here. And I'm going to now deform it with lattice, okay? I'm going to use hard ops lattice to deform this. Hard ops lattice is extremely easy to use. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant and uh, if you guys need any of the add-ons i'm using the in the video description so if i'm going to deform that like this now let me add the bevel to this one uh, press 3 with hard ups to create this kind of a, a security parameter uh, bevel and press ctrl 2 you see how cl yeah, how clean this deformation is even when i'm going to uh, grab this lattice and sort of you know rotate it on let's say you know uh, 45 degrees here I can even add more uh, subdivision control 3 and look how smooth this edge is. It's very smooth. So now you can see that everything deforms very beautifully. It's really even and there's no distortions, no shading problems whatsoever. It's very smooth. But look what happens when I'm going to move some of these loops around. Okay, so I'm going to move them here. I'm going to grab this loop and move it in here. 
okay and i'm gonna grab this one and move it somewhere here and look what happens now so even though i have quads and i have literally the same type of topology but different quality of it my mesh is being uh, deformed very badly because simply the topology is not fitting the purpose of what i'm trying to achieve you need to have an evenly distributed quads in this situation to achieve this beautiful curve the same in here you know that's really important however occasionally you don't really need even quad topology to achieve a certain result so let's grab a cube and move it somewhere here okay uh, let's grab it somewhere here and i'm going to scale this on uh, these axes and i'm going to make this one a bit wider and i'm going to apply the scale and i'm going to run a bevel here let's say five segments is it five segments yes yeah, four segments of four edges and i'm going to uh, you know insert this and extrude it and we're going to run a bevel on this one press three to create this security bevel and we're going to press ctrl three to subdivide it and look at this my subdivision holds even though i have a massive and i mean massive hang on this is an hang on right here in the middle and the massive hang on here in the back and you can see that the shading holds and even if it doesn't you can always insert this uh here to improve the shading and you can do the same thing here to improve the shading and you're good to go so with this example you can clearly see that uh, size of topology even on sub d doesn't matter but it again it depends when and also you can have even the massive angons and they work just fine with sub d no shading problems no distortions it looks very clean and it will save you a lot of you know time and hustle and also the polycom is going to be lower because uh, you know this is a massive angon and you uh, don't have to run all these stupid edges in here. You could if you wanted to, but what's the point if you don't have to? So again, you need to ask yourself, what's the purpose of your model? How are you gonna be using it, okay? Do you really need to waste the time to create a perfect topology or, you know, or just quad topology? Do you really need it? So before you start modeling something, ask yourself this question. And lastly, even though you have, um, you know, you have quads, you can still work with bullions and create, you know, um, and create bullion cuts on your mesh. Now this is a bullion cut here. You can clearly see that because if I go here, you can see that this uh, mesh has been, you know, um, cut with a bullion, and you can see that this is full of angons and the shading works. Now the shading works because um, the um, the angons here are small enough not to be affected by this curvature if this angle was larger like this right you'll clearly see there's a bending and this will affect shading like you can see here and here but when this angle is smaller right like this um it doesn't really matter because it just cannot be bent it's there's not enough curvature here to bend it okay so as long as it doesn't animate you're fine of course this wouldn't work in a game asset because it's way too dense but you know that's a different story if this was a game asset i wouldn't be doing this i would be basically doing it differently i'll be cutting this with a knife and then basically running proper topology here in terms of sub d uh we, you know with securing loops like i just did in here because that's pure sub d it's not a boolean right this is just an element created with sub d so again you need to think ahead and you know make sure that your uh, topology matches the purpose for which you're gonna be using your model all right so to sum it up guys do you need quads no are quads still useful yes can you use angons in your game asset yes you can can you use triangles yes you can can you use triangles and angles on sub mesh of course you can but again it depends on what you're gonna be using that mesh for right so hope this answered your question guys thanks for watching see you in the next one